Welcome to Boom. Where we have five mechanics, mechanics on our hands. Boom. 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 Welcome to the third episode of Biomechanics on Our Minds. As a reminder, I'm Melissa. And I'm Hannah. And we are recording from an actual studio today, which is super cool. Super fancy. So fancy. Um, On today's episode, we're going to be having an interview with Felipe Carpez, the International Society of Biomechanics Economically Developing Countries Officer. And he's going to talk about the EDC programs and what biomechanics is like in economically developing countries. Um, We're also going to hear from a student from Brazil who participated in an EDC program in the United States and kindly offered to share her experiences with us. But first... We have our bit of boom. 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 So the ISB, along with various companies, actively supports the economically developing countries by funding projects, infrastructure, student research, ISB member research, and even visits to different sites in economically developing countries. And currently, there are seven economically developing countries partnered with the ISB. What is an economically developing country? Is there some definition for that? Yeah, interestingly, even Wikipedia says there's no formal definition. Um, But developing countries are, in general, countries that have not achieved a significant degree of industrialization relative to their populations and have, in most cases, a medium to low standard of living. And there's actually a strong association between low income and high population growth. So we want to give you an example of biomechanics research in an EDC with one of the projects that was set up through the International Society of Biomechanics. So we're going to take a quick look at a study that was conducted in 2011 in Benin, West Africa. Erika Bukaj Gavro, Genevieve Dumasa, and Mohamed Lawani examined the biomechanics of head load carriage during pregnancy because this activity was identified as a risk factor for back pain during pregnancy. They measured the angles of the trunk and of the head relative to the trunk using electrogoniometers during the specific task of head load carriage in a group of pregnant women and a control group of non-pregnant women. Wait, can you say that word one more time? What did they use to measure? An electrogoniometer. Uh, this electric device actually uses angle sensors like potentiometers, strain gauges, and more recently accelerometers to measure joint angles. Oh, okay, sweet. So that must be how they figured out that during walking, carrying a load on the head caused significantly larger upper trunk extension and smaller flexion of the head relative to the trunk for both groups of women. That also allowed them to find out that the load on the head decreased upper trunk motion to provide better stability for balancing the load, but actually increased motion at the sacrum to compensate and create normal gait. Yeah, and interestingly enough, the pregnant women showed larger upper trunk movements than the non-pregnant women in the frontal and sagittal planes during the unloaded walking trials. But then during the loaded walking trials, they had similar upper trunk motion to the non-pregnant women. Hmm, that's strange. Why, Why do you think that was? So the hypothesis is that the larger moments in the unloaded condition were due to the enlarged abdomen of pregnant women that created a larger moment about the L5 and S1 vertebrae. Hmm. Why then would they be similar upper trunk motions between the two groups in the loaded condition? What's changing there? What is that load doing? So the researchers suggest that the demand on the trunk musculature was higher for pregnant women to balance the load on the head, which then led to similar motions as the non-pregnant group. Oh, I get it. Okay, so the take-home message, don't make mom carry anything extra for you while she's pregnant. Uh, Yeah, so that's a good uh, message to take home. But in all seriousness, studies like these are really important because it gives us insight into mechanisms that may cause injury and can be used to develop devices or better practices to help mitigate these injuries, which is really what biomechanics is all about. One researcher behind creating opportunities to do biomechanics in economically developing countries is Professor Felipe Carpes from the Federal University of Pampa, or UniPampa. 
Unipampa is a young university established in a remote and low-income zone of Rio Grande do Sul state in Brazil. When Felipe moved to Unipampa, there weren't any facilities for biomechanics research, and starting from nothing but a book donation, Felipe built up his research group on applied neuromechanics in only five years to become one of the best-equipped laboratories for biomechanics research in South America. Wow. With us now is the International Society of Biomechanics Economically Developing Countries Officer, Felipe Carpas. Felipe is a professor at the Center for Health Sciences at the Federal University of Pampa Laboratory of Neuromechanics in Brazil. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today from Spain. Well, thank you, Melissa, and thank you for organizing these activities that I think they, these activities are very important to show not only what ISCB has been doing on EDC projects, but also to show to the people wherever they are, what is biomechanics, how biomechanics is in daily life. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really um, important to make sure that people get an understanding of biomechanics worldwide. So um, first, I was wondering if you could kind of give an overview of what the current economically developing countries or, um, as you said, the EDC projects are. Okay, so yes, uh, the ISB has many projects that we call EDC projects. They are developed in different places around the globe. So... If you, if you visit our website at isbweb.org, you can find under the, the page activities, the EDC activities. So, well, I have one EDC project in my lab. We have a YouTube channel with many, many, many uh, classes, courses, lectures from Congress, interviews, and videos about experiments in the lab that people can watch and for free in YouTube. But there are many others. Uh, we have pro uh, some projects um, like projects in Benning. So this is one project that joined people from Canada, United Kingdom, um, US to develop some new laboratories. We have pro pro uh, another project in India this this uh, group is uh, working very very well in the in the past years. So many uh, biomechanists from different places, developed places, went there to to help to develop the group, the laboratory, and also to establish new projects. We have a project in Tanzania as well, Kenya, Venezuela, and and now we have some projects starting uh, in. China and Cuba. So, yeah, yeah, as you see, so many different places and so many people trying to start, but not only start, keep working on biomechanics. So sometimes the main challenge in EDC is not, is start is a challenge, but keep going, it's another big challenge. Yeah, absolutely. And are these projects for students or are they for professors? Um, who are these kind of targeted for? Well, all the projects have its professors involved, but also students. In some cases, there are master and PhD students as well. In other cases, not because not all the places um, have master and PhD programs. So sometimes they have students, but they are not PG students, are not master students. They are uh, undergrad or graduate students. So it depends on the place. But yes, uh, of course, that participation of the students is fundamental. Right. Okay. And so kind of looking at maybe some differences in how biomechanics research works in uh, the economically developing countries, um, Do what are some of the the topics, I know you mentioned a couple, um, but I guess what are some of the topics and, and how are they maybe different um, than what you would see in other places? Okay, well, uh, here as well, there is a high variability between the places. But in general, what I can say is that it's a kind of characteristic of the EDC project. They, they are designed to solve some local problems. Like I remember, People from India uh, in, with interest to investigate prosthetic people, so because they cannot 
perform some movement that are part of the Indian culture. So this is a kind of example of top of investigation. But also to, to keep in mind that in many, many places, the EDC project, it's a kind of pioneer activity to establish a biomechanics group. So in many cases, the, the project will be to establish a research group. It means qualify people, organize a, a laboratory setup, and, and, and in this regard, there is a, a very, very important participation of the people from more developed places that can help these guys to establish the, 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 the right directions. Let's say, let's, let's say this to, to keep going on biomechanics. So topics will depend on the place. Generally, we will attend some local, uh, demand, but always looking at what have been doing on biomechanics in other places. Right. What are maybe some of the differences on how, on the methods or how the research is conducted um, with these EDC projects? Yeah, well, uh, one thing that I uh, observe in the EDC projects in the past years is that sometimes the limitation in the background of the participants is a, is a problem. Well, not a problem, but it's something it's something that should be considered because what I mean, what I mean to say is that sometimes the students, they don't have the same, uh, formation, the same activities during the, the underground, undergrad students studies, uh, like someone from a very, very developed place. I mean, you can have classes during your undergraduate studies in a very well, very good laboratory with many, many, many different uh, biomechanics professors. And these guys, sometimes they will have contact with only one professor, very, very limited facilities for research during the undergrad activities. And in the end, they will do whatever they can with the low resources. But it will be not the same when you are having more experience with more people and, and, and more research, even doing your undergraduate studies. I'm not sure if I was clear enough. So if you have some additional question that you want to clarify, please. Yeah, um, I guess when you say like limited resources, I guess if you could maybe elaborate on that or maybe how these laboratories deal with limited resources. Yeah, the, the, when when I say resource here is not only not I not only talk about uh, equipment. Sometimes uh, a few people work on biomechanics is also a resource limitations. But when we when we talk about facilities for research, this is the biggest challenge ever for EDC because sometimes they have the people but they don't have the the facilities. In other, in other uh, cases, they have the facilities, but they don't have people enough to work. So in this, in this regard, one thing that I, I think is fundamental and I have been doing the past years and also I have um, fomented this for people that I talk is to create networks. So if you don't have an expertise in one topic, you can talk to someone that have the, the expertise. Uh, if you have one good idea and you don't have the facilities, so you maybe you can go to one place where they have the facilities. Maybe you can start a collaboration to, 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 to answer your research question. Okay, that's really great. And I guess what types of experiences can a student gain from working in an EDC lab, or what types of skills might they develop there that they wouldn't develop elsewhere? Well, he, he is a very good, this is a very good question because, I mean, uh, let's say, let's talk about the experience I have in Brazil, okay? So it's common to the laboratories in Brazil have only Brazilian students, okay? Some, if you go to, to Canada, for example, US or here in Europe, uh, you will be in a research group, in a laboratory, and you have people from different places. 
So this, the, when the student participate in these research groups in the EDC, they have the chance to be in touch with the guys from different places. So here it's much more than learning only about research. It's learning about social differences. It's learning about the world. You know what I mean? So because you'll be in touch with different uh, people. Yeah, and I, I mean that's that's really important. Yeah, and like you said, not just in in biomechanics and in research, but just as a as a person and um, really getting to understand other people and and um, other ways of life. How, what do you see? Maybe are some of the challenges a student might have either visiting an EDC or maybe like a student working in a laboratory in an economically developing country. Okay, I will just um, add a bit more on the, the previous question and then I answer you and this you can edit after. So um, also talking about the student participation in the lab, in Brazil it's very common to the participation start very early. So when you are an undergrad student, uh, you can participate in research groups and have some research experience. And in, in many universities in Brazil, this is very common. I know that this is not very common in other places, and I'm not fully um, aware about how it works in other developed places. But when I talk to people from EDC, that want some advice or we are talking about the project, I also I, I, always, I always suggest to include students uh, very early in research because if, you, if, if these students from EDC start to see how research is important, so they will be um, interested, let's say, to join research. And this is what EDC places need. They need, we need, because we, because I'm from Brazil, so we need more and more science being developed because science can change the reality of, of the places. And, well, regarding the challenges, and we have many students from EDC that they, they want to go abroad, you know, they want to go to other country to, to see different cultures, to learn. But sometimes what I feel is that they are afraid of the challenge. So in the, in the past year, there is so, there is very, very, uh, uh, few applications for, for the EDC travel grant. And of course, uh, there are some some factors influencing this, like the, the the cost for traveling. But sometimes it's possible to travel to uh, places that is nearby, and but they have different language, for example. And then the students are afraid about uh, uh, about traveling to this place, and well, how they will deal with the language and and, and this uh, kind of thing, and. For this, in special, what I suggest is that, well, uh, English is fundamental. Uh, there are many places that don't speak English, like Brazil, like Spain. But if you go to, to, if you, if you go to a place where there are people from different, uh, different countries working together, it's most likely that they will speak in English. So to overcome this challenge, you need to be exposed to the language. Yeah, I could imagine it would be a little bit intimidating to go somewhere where they don't understand the language. Of course, it's hard, okay? Like, for me, it's always hard when I have to do a conversation in, in English because I have to think, I have to organize the, 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 what I will talk, and I have to pronunciate uh, correctly, and <laughs> for many times, I, I can't. So, but... I don't care about being exposed to this. So, and for my students in my lab, I used to say that you first need to read in English very well. So if you read English very well, you can access the literature. Secondly, you need to write in English because if you can write in English, you can write your papers and submit to good journals that 
because they are they they will publish papers in English and then talk and listen in English is important because when you go abroad when you go to a conference and you go to present some uh, war, some abstract in a congress sometimes when we went to this conference international conference you see students from EDC presenting their works and they are very good works and the presentation is fine but they can, can they cannot answer quest, questions after because they have difficult to understand the questions and whatever so well this is part of the game you know you have to you have to deal with this and for every professor from a EDC group i would say that expose the, the 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 students to the english language and try to make the students uh, to see how important it is to to be able to communicate in english it doesn't matter if you talk in is a perfect language or not if you are speaking correctly or not but at least that you can uh, keep a conversa conversation with someone so and i would say this is a very very big challenge uh, for the students in need to see yeah, language yeah i can imagine i mean i know it's already difficult just as an english speaker to communicate science so i can't imagine then having to communicate in another language but um, like you said, it's definitely essential for continuing to build collaborations and advancing the field. What kind of change are you hoping to see from the economically developing country programs? Well, I have to I have to tell you that I would like to see more projects. You know, uh, I I like to I would like to see people from different places proposing some activities that can benefit not only their students but also other students. Uh, well, it's true that we have many, many activities that are being, uh, are do, uh, that are, um, uh, happening now. I mean, there are many different groups, but if you look to the, the biomechanics community, there is still a, a lot of, uh, a lot of room for EDC projects. So I would like to see more projects. I would like to see more people, um, Taking the flag of the EDC, say, well, okay, let's start a small project here. It can be a YouTube channel, it can be a journal club, it can be a annual symposium, uh, it can be a research project. I don't know, but some something that show to EDC students and for EDC community that first, science is important. Secondly, biomechanics has a, a major role, role for science development in many different areas, physical education, physiotherapy, engineering, whatever. How then can students get involved? I know you said that um, a kind of a variety of like graduate students and undergrads, um, what kind of opportunities are there to participate in these programs? Yeah, well, um, the ISB has a travel grant, right? So this travel grant, it's, there is a deadline uh, twice, a, twice a year. So I would like to see more and more students apply for these grants, not only to attend conferences. Okay, of course, conferences are important, but I would like to see more students apply to travel to a, to a different place, spend one week, two week, a month, I don't know, the time that uh, is possible to be in contact with people that are working in not only similar topics, but also other topics so that they can have a general idea about biomechanical applications. And I also would like to see uh, students from developed places applying to travel grants to, to go to EDC uh, places. What I mean, sometimes, um, uh, well, if you want one student from the EDC apply for the grant and travel to uh, another lab, there will be one people exposed, right? So it's one people that's traveling that will be um, exposed to the biomechanics in different places, right? But if you have someone from a more developed place, developed place applying for this grant and traveling to a EDC group and traveling to stay with a EDC group, it's one people that will help many, many more people. So I think it would be very nice to, to see some student that wants to see different cultures, to help people, to sometimes to uh, apply uh, 
he the, the expertise that that he had he or she has and and helping more people for, to to develop biomechanics. So it would be nice to see people from also f- people from developed places wanting to travel to EDC and help it, um, new groups and new uh, labs to develop. Yeah, I think that's really amazing. Do you have anything else that you want to add about the EDC programs? Mm, I talk about the travel grants. I talk about the, the project. Well, there is something that I don't know where you can insert in the podcast, but let, let, let me just talk to you about and then you see if you can uh, take it for the podcast or not. One, one major issue in some EDC places is to, to contact the people, you know, like if you send an email to some group in Brazil, they will answer you in a, in a while. But for these guys that are developing, establishing a research lab in Cuba, well, they, I think they, they, they are able to, to send message every week or every two weeks. So sometimes it took, took to me 15 days to, to keep the conversation. Like for people from Kenya, uh, I send an email to them and then they took like a month to, to answer to me. And I talked to people that know these places and they told me that sometimes it's because they don't have access to internet. So. This is an additional challenge for developing biomechanics because every everything is in the internet today. If you want a paper, it is in the internet. Uh, what 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 we have been doing to 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 to, to help in the, with this? By, uh, the ISB received some book donations in the past years from different professors, and then we send books and journals to these remote places. And well, uh, I don't know what was the what was the last time that you got a, 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 a journal article in the paper, print a printed article, okay? But sometimes for these places that they don't have access to internet, if you have the volumes and the issues of the journals, it helps a lot. So I think this is a very important activity that the EDC wow, program okay. yeah, I had no uh, idea they, did in the past years that. as well. That's really great. Yeah, and thank you for your work with EDC. And I know you're making a big difference, um, not just to all the students involved, but also the biomechanics research then is an impacting so many people's lives. And I think um, just the general experience of different cultures kind of coming together, I think, is, is really amazing. So. And being able to do that through biomechanics is really cool. So yeah, thank you. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The question we kind of tend to end the interview with is, what are you most excited about in the field of biomechanics? Well, that's a good question, and I would I will answer these questions thing, uh, thinking about what I have been doing on research. So for me, it's the interaction between biomechanics and other fields like neuroscience. I think this is a very exciting uh, topic for research in the future. Yeah, I would say that sometimes we we look at biomechanics da- biomechanics data and we try to to find the answers of or, or the explanations just look at the mechanics, right? And and sometimes we realize that so many different things happening in your in our uh, central nervous system that will be affecting the mechanics, like what you how. how what you are thinking, or how do you deal with a dual task, and what is your cognitive level, what is your purpose while you are doing some activity. So I think this is, it's complex to answer, but it's a topic that for me, it's very exciting. Yeah, that is really exciting. Another question that we like, that we've kind of started this segment called Research Fails, where we talk about something that's happened in recently or like in the past that's been a fail if you will that we made and some have been kind of funny so but it's kind of just encouraging that it's like okay to make mistakes and learn from them and i don't know if you have any example of yeah well i would have many examples <laughs> <laughs> but i will tell you some that uh, happens in the past right uh, otherwise my, my students will be able to identify <laughs> fight <laughs> i remember that i started in biomechanics when I was a second year student of physical education, I stopped by the laboratory of biomechanics 
And at that time, I I talked to my to the guy that was my supervisor in the PG in the future, and I said, okay, it sounds nice. People talked me. Talk, uh, people talk to me very highly about the research in this lab, so I would be interested to participate. And well, she's uh, he said to me, well, okay, uh, come back next week. And then I I went there next week, and he came, ah, uh, please come back in the next week. And at the third attempt, uh, he said, okay, now I see that you are very interested, so uh, come in. And my first project was related to post route changes in swimmers and at that time the laboratory use used uh, the peak model system for kinematics assessment it means that you have to record the data the videos in videotapes right and then you have to uh, send this data to the computer and then do the the the, the reconstruction after whatever so what happens is that we set up the research we invited a lot like five or four uh, swimmers to start the first measurements in the lab and we organize everything and we perform all the experiments and in the end i realized that i did not uh push the record button uh in the the i i did not put the the peak mods to record the data <laughs> and then i lost the five uh the the first five Subjects of the research were lost because of this. And of course, at that time, I was very pissed off because I said, oh, no, what my professor would, would, would think about me and whatever. But in the end, I re now I realize that this is part of the learning pro process, right? Sometimes you have to be aware of all the details. So we have, please make sure always you uh, push the button to record your data when you're I think we could say that many times and still continue to make that mistake. Do you remember what your professor's reaction was? Yeah, of course. He is he's a very nice guy. So he said, "Well, doesn't don't worry about this. It happened. So uh, try to to take these guys again to the lab, and I'm sure the next time you'll not forget to to press the button." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, well, thank you so much for talking about uh, the Economically Developing Countries program and for sharing a little bit about your research. Really appreciate it and uh, really looking forward to the future of these EDC projects and seeing what they bring. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. I hope all the, the people that are listening to the podcast are able to understand my, my English. And, well, if you have any questions to me, uh, just send me a message and I will be happy to, to be in touch with you. That was a great fail by Felipe, but let's take a look at some fails from students who have sent in their own research struggles. Research fails. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was really fun to get some research fails from students that have been listening to Boom. Um, so one that I thought was a particularly funny this week was a student who <laughs> went to do a reaction and it wasn't working, so she tried to sh troubleshoot the reaction. And her troubleshooting lasted five hours until another lab mate told her that it was actually an overnight reaction, which is why it wasn't working. So the next day she came back and it actually still hadn't worked even though she let it um, sit overnight and she was pretty upset. So then another lab mate told her to squirt a little water in it and then after that it ended up working. Wow, water so, helps everything. Just add water. That's, That's the story. <laughs> um, cool. Another fail sent to us by a fellow biomechanist involves some fun with motion capture. And... Mm -hmm. This student had subjects running on treadmills, and they actually collected all of their motion capture data for one subject, but ended up deleting it before saving. And that she, is always a bummer. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, she also reported that some of her subjects inadvertently moved EMG electrodes, probably because they get a little itchy sometimes, or even stuck markers that had fallen off back on themselves in arbitrary places. (laughs) That part really makes me laugh because I could totally see a subject picking up a marker that had fallen off and just putting it somewhere on their leg. I mean, there's already a discrepancy, you know, between researchers and it's difficult to find the correct places. Um, So it kind of would be a struggle. I think even if your if your subjects are younger, you know, uh, they can often want to play with the markers too, which can be difficult. Yeah. They may throw them. <laughs> are you doing motion capture of babies, Hannah? <laughs> you know, the children's hospital does have a motion lab, and I've heard some great stories from there oh, really? too. We'll have to get some fails from uh, over there. Then that sounds like fun. Now we have a unique perspective on participating in an EDC program from a student who traveled from an EDC to a research lab in the United States. Morgana Alves de Brito received her bachelor's degree in physiotherapy from the Federal University of Pampa, followed by a master's degree in biomechanics from the Federal University of Santa Maria, both of them in Brazil. And now she is a physiotherapist. And when she received the grant from ISB, she traveled to the U.S. and spent 30 days at Long Island University working with Professor... Evangelos Papas in projects related to ACL injury prevention in sports. So why did you decide to participate in the program? I've decided to participate because I saw the program has a great opportunity to practice my English, to know new places, which ended up being one of the biggest cities in the world, was New York, and to establish networking since the professor that I visited was working with us only through email. Where did you travel to and what project did you work on? I went to Long Island University in Brooklyn, New York, where Professor Evangelos Papas received me. I was working in a project investigating ACL injury risk factors, and it was one of the research lines of Professor Papas which was why we contacted him in the first place, to try some collaboration. What did you learn or gain from that experience? The main thing was the language learning. My primary language is Portuguese, but for research, the language that you're going to use more is English. So to be able to practice and learn so much more was very good for me. And I think I was more prepared because of that, when I had to do an oral presentation of my research in a congress a few years later. To know and experience the classes from the university was also very enlightening. What types of challenges did you face? I did not consider the language a challenge because I was learning so much that it was just a fun thing for me. Maybe going to a huge city, being from a very small town in Brazil, was a little scary at first but nothing that was going to stop me from going or enjoying. And my advisor and the rest of the people in the university were very welcoming. The good challenge was participating on the article processing and writing, but it's a nice practice for the research that I was doing in Brazil and that I continue doing in my master's degree. Do you have any advice for students that may be interested in an EDC program? Don't be afraid to try. Send the application and see what happens. You will spend a little bit of your time preparing the application, and I'm sure it will be worth every second if you get it. And if you don't, send it again next year. So thank you to Morgana for sharing her experiences with us. I hope that it provided you with some additional insight to what it might be like to participate in an EDC program. And you can um, look at more information on that on the International Society of Biomechanics website. Um, And even if you aren't an ISB member, I mean, I think it's just such an important thing to keep in mind is um, how you can support biomechanics across the world and especially in places that might not have all of the equipment that you that um, other labs have. It's important to give back support the biomechanics community worldwide. 
Yeah, absolutely. We're keeping this a, a worldwide community and organization. And um, I know we focused on EDC through ISB, but if um, anyone knows on about any other programs that support biomechanics internationally, it'd be really cool to hear from other people and other programs that might be available as well. We also wanted to thank our good friend Peter Washington, who is a bioengineering student here at Stanford, who has made all of our boom music, and we're really thankful for him and his musical gifts. Yes, huge thank you to you, Peter. We particularly enjoyed our transitions. We had new transitions to Bit of Boom and research fails that we thought were really wonderful. But yeah, thanks for listening today. If you want to share a bit of boom or a research fail, send us an email at isb.studentrepresentative at gmail.com. You can also follow the International Society of Biomechanics on Facebook and Twitter for more biomechanics. Finally, we would just like to take a moment of silence for all the names that we have butchered in this episode. We (laughs) deeply apologize. Um, Please feel free to send us some pronunciation corrections, and we will try to do better in the future. We made no offense. (laughs) We hope we didn't offend you or anyone else. Biomechanics (laughs) off our minds. Boom. I love it. (laughs) Super, super. Yeah, 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 yeah.